So you may or may not have seen my uh, comparison video with the 6D and the 5D Mark IV. Uh, basically, I wasn't that happy. I want 4K and I was thinking about Micro Four Thirds. Well, since then, the 6D Mark II has come out and shock horror, there's no 4K. You know, like in five years time with that camera, anyone brave enough to buy it, <laughs> still no 4K and you haven't even got a proper full, full frame lens anyway. It's a cut down body. Uh, pretty astonishing. Nobody can understand what's going on the Canon. I guess they just want to sell lenses. I don't know. Uh, every camera is crippled to protect every other camera. It makes <laughs> no sense. There's just no logic to it. Anyway, my response to Canon is hello, and I'm entering the Micro Four Thirds world. Well, I know I'm going to lose. Uh, I'm not going to get full frame uh, quality in from my images. If I go micro four thirds, I know I'm basically losing two stops of light. I'm, I'm getting, you know, which means two stops more noise at equivalent ISO. But what you do get is something really compact. That's with the 70 to 200 equivalent. I mean, you know, cannons would be like out there in a huge body. You know, it is a great system, but it is expensive. The lenses are really expensive, uh, they say, because the market isn't that big, but for whatever reason. Uh, but at least you get value for money in the bodies. Uh, you know, they do this G80 stroke G85, which I went for, which seems to be uh, best bang for buck at the moment. Uh, I can get the G80 with the 35 to 100 lens or less than the price of the GH5 body. And for me, as a non-professional, someone who's not that serious, I'm doing it for fun. All I'm losing really is um, 60 frames a second. I'm down to 30 uh, frames a second 4K. But I'm, <laughs> I'm getting a lot more value. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, if Panasonic had got the uh, autofocus working, that may have been a bit more compelling. But none of their cameras have great uh, autofocus in, in, uh, in video. You always have to switch to the manual focus, as, as in, I don't mean manually focus on the body, I mean the shutter focus. So you don't have continuous focus, you just focus when you want. And then it works really well, it's really quick. So I just want to focus on something, press the shutter, it's focused. It moves out of the focus plane, refocus. Not a problem for me. So it's been a, a little bit of a, a learning curve going to micro four thirds. But um, one of the things obviously is great, which you uh, no matter what Canon do, even with the 5K Mark IV, and only with a mirrorless are you going to be able to use your video through the viewfinder because it's digital. Or you're not going to be able to do that because of what an SLR is. So only I think they've only got one mirrorless Canon, and uh, I don't think that even has a uh, a viewfinder. I may be wrong, but if it's if they've got one, it's an add-on because I don't it doesn't come with one. So that's great for video anyway, until Canon have some um, serious mirrorless cameras. I know I could go to other places, is the Canon aren't the only manufacturers of cameras. And I kind of was thinking about Sony. And what put me off is it's just the attraction of a really compact traveling system with a micro four thirds. Having said that, now realizing that I could use all my all my Canon lenses quite easily with the Metabones adapter. I might have gone gotten the Sony X six five the A six five zero zero because it is about two stops faster in video. But but anyway, I'm not unhappy. This is a really nice camera. It's a nice feel. Blah blah blah. I've done a few test shots, um, but I've got a bit of a hang, hang of it. And I was just going to give my thoughts on what has been my little bit of learning curve so far on my Micro Four Thirds journey has been, first of all, this is always a dream lens of mine. When you think of, you know, the Canon 70 to 200, I know it's not a direct comparison and the quality, blah, 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 but still, you know, you basically got 70 to 200 and a Canon would be like that and it'd be huge and it'd be heavy and you couldn't do video because the video would be like that because I'm, I do everything handheld. So the learning curve has been, first of all, the 35 to 100. I wasn't expecting the amount of focus breathing that it's got. In other words, you're not really getting 200 millimeters till you go to infinity. So anything basically indoors and normal distance, it's way out of um, the 200 millimeters. If, if you want to use the 200 millimeters, if you're doing portrait and stuff like that. And the thing is, 
it's compounded because something else I didn't realize. Micro Four Thirds is a 4-3 ratio sensor. Full frame APS-C is a 3-2 ratio sensor. That means you get for the equivalent focal length, uh, you get the same, you get less width but more height on the Micro Four Thirds. Same, it's the same focal length, but it kind of feels like it's less because of that width. You know, when you're zooming in and out, it's the width that you're you're really paying attention to. Now, I know focal length is measured across the diagonal. It's the angle of view. So when you're comparing focal lengths, that's what you're comparing, the view you get along that diagonal. And so that, I'm not saying that's out. I'm just saying if feels a lot less than 200 millimeters, but it's compounded because uh, it isn't 200 millimeters uh, anything but infinity. And these are the these are the com quick comparison shots that I have taken to confirm this. So these are all my images straight out of the camera. These are just TIFF conversions from the raw files. Had absolutely nothing done to them at all. I've just converted them to TIFF so uh, I can add some text to it to make it quite a lot easier to tell exactly what I'm looking at. Here I'm looking at the 100D with a 135mm lens because Canon 8PSCs have a 1.6 crop that means I've got a 216mm equivalent angle of view. I've kept the uh, f-stop and the shutter speeds the same across the cameras and I've let the camera adjust for its the ISO so I can see the difference in exposure between the cameras. There's a 100D, 6D, exposed absolutely identical and you can see the only difference between the angle of view is indeed because of that extra 16 millimeters. Now the G80, as you can see exposing brighter and that was that's consistent across all the images that I've taken between the two cameras but does look a bit more accurate than the Canon. Um, so I can't really complain, but it does mean I'm going to get more noise, and, you know, unless I do everything completely manual or just for that exposure, which I probably do. I'll probably bring it down by one to two thirds of a stop for general use. Um, but looking at that angle of view, obviously remembering that micro four thirds is a four three ratio image and APS-C and full frame are three two uh, ratio image which means between identical angle of views between identical focal lengths you are going to get less width on the micro four thirds but more height actually exactly the opposite of what I would have uh, if I wanted you know by choice I'd rather have uh, more width and, and less height but um, you know especially as everyone goes 16-9 uh, ratios these days uh, for most of your on screen stuff but anyway uh, it is what it is so but, he, but you can see straight off that folk it's not the same focal length even when you take into account uh, those ratios so only real way for me to tell just what focal length I'm at is to crop out that central part of the image which should be the same on all of them. I then have to adjust for the megapixel difference between the actual images. And that just means I just have to compare the, the, the number of pixels on the original width and then see how many pixels I got the width of the actual crop and then see what the difference is. And any difference would be explained by the difference in uh, the focal length that the lens is actually given. So here are the crops. There's your 6D, and there's the G80, there's the 100D. You see can the cannons consistently expose the same. The G80 consistently, ex consistently exposes a little bit brighter. But adjusting for those ratios, as I just mentioned, I do find a difference of 0.07. So there should be a 1.19 ratio difference between the 6D image and the G80 image if they're at the same focal length. Actually it's 1.26 and that means 
um, I'm actually at about 185. So I'm at 185 millimeters at 16 foot five or five meters. Um, and that, that focused breathing, which is uh, what's going on, is obviously worse at uh, smaller distances. So anything indoors, you're never gonna get 200 millimeters basically. Um, you know, close up of anything, you, it's, a, it's a big, there's a lot of focused breathing going on. I was really disappointed. I didn't know that was gonna be the case with this lens. But um, obviously I need to compare, just to make sure it really is a 200 millimeter equivalent lens, I need to compare at infinity. So going outdoors to uh, to get um, focus at infinity, to, so I can get rid of the focus breathing issues. And once I do that, things are a little clearer. So these are the images. Again, you can see I'm, I'm keeping um, at f4 one six four zero shutter speed and letting the ca the uh, camera choose the ISO. Canon is at ISO 160, G80 again. That's a that's a stop slower, isn't it? And 100 100D again, same as the 60 at 160. So it's consistent. But I, you know, I actually think that's a more pleasant image. Don't forget, this is straight out of the camera. Um, so I can't really complain. That's a nice image. I mean, I'm, I comp and we're comparing it with um, two of Canon's best prime lenses. So, it holds up really well, I've got to say. So, again, to see what's going on, I need to crop out that central part of the image. And here we are with the crops, 100D, 6D. G80. I did <laughs> incorrectly label it originally. Sorry, at 100 as a 100D, uh, but it, this is the G80. Um, you can see, when you get down to this sort of level, you can see it falling apart a little bit more than the uh, the other two. But, but you got to remember those, these are those are prime lenses, and the, the 100D is actually at uh, two one six millimeters. So I actually think the G80 holds up pretty pretty well. I can't be unhappy. But again, adjusting the actual the size of the actual crop for the, uh, what should be the difference between the pixel size, um, explained by the pixels on the original sensor. Uh, they are all identical. So once you go to infinity, it, it is a 200 millimeter lens. It does agree with what, uh, with the other two lenses. So yeah, uh, not, not, it's not <laughs> earth shattering, but I wasn't expecting as much focused breathing going on as it has, given it is actually uh, the Mark II version of the original 35 to 100 millimeter lens. So that was the first thing, a lot of focused breathing going on, and this is the Mark II. <laughs> I, did, I didn't think it would be bad, but look, it's a telephoto lens. The prime lens is, I get that. You, you, you know, you've know, you got to be realistic. Uh, about this camera in particular, quick things off the top of my head that I found that I wasn't expecting. Burst mode, high burst mode, raw and fine JPEG, you can't do it. I don't know why. So if you're doing fast burst mode, you're basically shooting highest quality JPEGs, but you, you want raws back up, you can't do it. You've got to reduce the quality down to um, this super fine, fine, anyway, it's below the top one. Can't remember if it goes super fine, fine, or fine, not quite fine, or something. But it's not. You can't do JPEG in the highest quality uh, with RAW. Um, that was a bit of a learning curve. Little issues. Found the buttons on the back a little bit fiddly. I'm used to slightly larger. I don't have big hands. I found that a bit fiddly. When I'm holding like that, this is how I hold it. My thumb protrudes a little bit. It's right up against the dial there at the top. I keep changing the shutter speed when I don't want to. Um, well, I guess you're going to learn to adjust to all these things, but um, yeah, so a couple of things that um, I wasn't expecting. The iPad, it's a little bit sharp. Um, I've had a little bit painful actually to keep your eye on that. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm used to a DLSR. I'm using the, the viewfinder all the time, really, and yeah, that kind of hurts my eye, my eyebrow. It's a bit. Sharp, could have had a bit more padding. Do find it consistently exposes brighter than any other camera I've got, not just the Canons, the Mi Compacts and everything. 
can't say it's inaccurate. It's probably a little brighter than it needs to be, so it looks like it's lifting shadows at the expense of highlights, but I can't say it's clipping highlights. Um, that's not been a problem. I suppose it is accurate. It's, I'm just not used to it being that bright. And the problem is, because it's two stops noisier to start with, gives the impression of being even noisier when you're comparing light with light with me uh, full frames. So, yeah, something I hadn't thought about till I actually got it. And I realised there are some nice lenses out there. Um, there aren't much, there isn't much in the way of decent primes with micro four thirds. And I'm sitting here with all my um, prime and non-prime, I've got to say all my other lenses that I got from Canon, and I'm thinking, mm, <laughs> I was a bit spoiled. Um, how am I going to do light for light with them? And I was looking at the Metabones. Now, I didn't realize how, how well they'd come on when they first came out, um, you know, basically weren't auto-focusing. Uh, they've really, apparently really come on and the autofocus is great, uh, except in video apparently with the uh, the Panasonics, but then autofocus isn't great in video anyway. But here's the thing, I, in, in looking up, in looking a bit more into the Metabones, and I realised what they were saying is that you can still use your EFS lenses if you mod them. So EFS, you know, made for Canon APS-C, you can't put them on a full frame. But hang on a sec, the only reason you can't put them on a full frame is because it's Canon. And Canon do what Canon do, they cripple everything to protect everything else. So, the reason you can't put it on is because they have a little protrusion coming out the end. Now that was the protrusion on that. Now you can mod all their APS, all their EFS lenses. Some are easier to do than others. Some, rec some like this, oh, this is the 17 to 55, 2.8 stabilized. You actually, you literally just pull the top off. And, and it comes off, and I can actually get that back in. I've not done any long-term damage to it. That will now go on a full frame, or a bit serious vignetting. Uh, but it's usable, a full frame. And I can put that now on a Metabones and stick that on here. And the Metabones is cheaper than if I went out and actually tried to buy a decent lens to use um, at wide angle on, on this. So it's 17 to 55 with the Metabones 0.7 on their Ultra. Uh, factor that's 24 millimeters on here and at f2 because you get a, another stop of light and it's a zoom lens and it's stabilized although obviously you've got in, in body as well so then i can use all that all my other lenses um which kind of defeats the object to go micro four thirds but um i didn't realize that canon had, had crippled their lenses like that so mod your EFS lens, you can get them on your full frame. Some work better than others on a full frame. Some at, at zoom um, are, are perfectly fine. Um, so, yeah, that was a learning curve. So I learned that, um, whereas someone like, you know, I think Nikon, you can you can get um, the APS mode, the crop mode on their full frame and use the crop lenses. You can't do that with Canon because I don't, I don't know why they got that mentality. So part of my micro four thirds journey was learning um, how I could use Canon lenses. Crazy, isn't it? Something else um, I realised I hadn't thought about before. Um, I was thinking if I could get the hundred to four hundred millimetre lens on this, uh, some great. You have got all that reach uh, in video. So the four K mode on this is a crop. Seeing. Various places say different things about that crop, I think between 2 and 2.4. Anyway, I've worked out what the crop is, and it's basically 2.2. So 100 to 400 lens on this uh, gives me 880 millimeters equivalent uh, with the, the extra crop of the 4K. And the thing is, with 4K, two times digital is better quality than using the crop mode on the Panasonic. The crop mode being, they do this extended zoom feature where on in HD, in 1080, it crops into the sensor rather than a full sensor readout, crops in and you get a bigger image without loss because it's not digitized. But even then, when you do, like, do that for a two times crop, uh, 4K with a two times digital is still better quality. You can go look over the net that's confirmed it, and I did, I did my own little test, confirmed that. So that means if you didn't even have 4K in your camera, like some of these little compact super zooms, and they say, well, I think like the P900 Nikon, or to 2000 millimeters, but no 4K. 
Um, and, but you're thinking, oh, I've got 2,000 millimeters uh, and HD, ton of... so the 100-400 on there, it would be it better than 16, 17, 60 millimeter, 1,760 millimeter equivalent in normal HD, um, and a little bit better quality. Well, <laughs> that's, that's staggering, isn't it? So, and I, you know, and I can use my viewfinder. I don't have to hold it like that. So that's quite exciting. So I may, I may go that route. But the thing is, I suddenly realised the problem with using the, the digital zoom on these cameras is that it's digital all the way through, even before you've reached the four. The, the fo so, for instance, 35 to 100, or say 70 to 200 equivalent, it's still two times digital at 70, even though it doesn't need to be digital till I've gone to 200. And also, the zoom is, it's with that, it's, it's quite awkward. It's really nice on these all-in-one bridge cameras to have the zoom lever. And I suddenly, I suddenly appreciate these bridge cameras a bit more because when you're zooming, A, you've got the, the zoom lever, and B, it's not digital until you've actually gone past the optical uh, focal length, focal reach of the lens. Um, so that that's, that's that was something. I don't know, it's not a big deal. It doesn't affect anybody. <laughs> it's just something that didn't really occur to me. Uh, till I started thinking it all through. Uh, so it's just interesting. So that's been my little learning curve so far. If anyone is interested and if uh, as my interest grows and my lens collection grows, um, I'll update my videos a bit more. Uh, but I need to do a bit more setting up with the camera. Um, I've basically been using the... So I'm not do <laughs> I don't want to do too much post-processing. I've just done... Um, quick test to see what would be a reasonable balance between uh, getting the most detail out of it. For instance, uh, in video, my set, what have I got for? My settings are, in video mode, um, I played around with the Cine D, the Cine V. Obviously, if you're going to grade in post and you're quite serious at it, the flatter you get in the camera, the better, blah, blah. But I'm looking for something that's in between. I could get a little bit more out in post if I want, but it still looks pretty reasonable in camera. So for me, I've gone the end of the day after doing a few tests, uh, you know, trying to see uh, acceptable sharpness without going over the top, but leaving me some room. So on video on my 4K, I've got natural, so contrast all the way down, sharpening down to minus four, uh, it goes all the way down to minus five, noise reduction down to minus two. Okay, I know everybody else takes it all the way down, I've left it on a little bit to get rid of a little bit of noise. Um, I, I found that the best balance. And saturation minus one, I found that quite nice. Images, my settings, I've got, tried them all now. Again, <laughs> best balance, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I've ended up with, uh, on standard, contrast minus three, uh, sharpness plus four. I know, <laughs> I know probably people are cringing saying this guy knows nothing. Look, I'm just saying, I'm trying to get something out of the camera without doing too much work. I'm going to shoot raw alongside it for anything that I really want to do post-processing on. Post-processing. Noise reduction all the way down, minus five. Uh, saturation plus two. Okay, a lot of people are going to say, I'm not listening to this guy anymore. I'm just saying, those are my, those are my JPEG settings. Okay, and I'm shooting raw alongside it. And I, I would say, something I wasn't expecting to use in the video is there... Uh, Icon, it's not like, uh, their, their eye dynamic and their eye resolution. Uh, let's actually turn them on to auto and standard. Uh, I did my little tests. I looked around the net. It seems they've come on quite, quite a lot. Although, um, some people actually have think had their eye dynamic on high. I've left it on auto. You know, I've just, just, I'm using it, but I'm not saying, um, I'm going, I'm going all in. But yeah. It, didn't seem to degrade anything. The eye resolution, I've tried on Panasonic's before and kind of uh, halos everywhere. The, the sharpening wasn't great. Actually, on when I'm in video, I found, you know, not too bad. I actually think it did improve the image. Uh, so, yeah, I've actually left those on. So that's where I am with the camera. I hope it's useful to somebody. Anyway, even if you're just following my micro full third journey, it's a learning curve for me. Maybe it's going to help someone else. Am I happy with this combination? Yes, 
I think it's great, especially if you actually think about a GH5, and I've got this for cheaper than just the, the body on the GH5. Um, this is great for walking around uh, videos, so compact, light, <laughs> you know, it's just not something uh, I'm used to. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the those, those Sony RX10 Mark II, Mark III's are an alternative. And there isn't that much difference, I don't think. Well, there is a considerable, but it's not huge. The difference in quality between the one-inch sensor and the Micro Four Thirds at this level is not as much as uh, the Micro Four Thirds to full frame. So having an all-in-one all one, all one bridge camera like that, and when you're not using it, the, the lens retracts right in, um, it's quite attractive. So anyway, I'm, I'm happy with this. I will say one thing. The first thing I did immediately is buy it. Well, I, I don't like sticking these things around my neck, um, having hang, hang it loose. I use a wrist, wrist strap. This is the uh, JJC wrist strap, uh, ST1. I really like it. So I don't have to worry about dropping it, holding it in my hand, it's really nice. And what I like is also, it comes apart really easy. If I just, I don't want that dangling and I'm not even gonna use anything. And I can just have it like that. So uh, yeah, just, just thought I'd say, I love these straps. I've got them on all my cameras, basically. Um, I don't like having the pressure on, on my neck, especially when you've got the really heavy gear. So, I'm on a little video. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for watching.